In this video, we're going to take a look at the what's, why's and how's of using a jig with your Roland Versa UV flatbed printer. So what is a jig? A jig is a template that can be used to quickly and accurately locate items on the bed of your device. The same layout file can then be used to generate a printable file so that the two marry up perfectly when printing. First of all, it is worth noting that you do not necessarily have to use a jig. When printing individual items, one-offs or shorter runs of flat or regular shaped items and materials, you can simply place them directly onto the bed and print without the need for a jig. However, if you are looking for a quick production setup, i.e. two of the same jigs for preloading, or if you are printing irregular shapes and products, or if you want to print edge to edge with a bleed on the items, then a jig will help for repeatability, accuracy, and speed. You can create a jig in any way that you see fit or using whatever tools you may have available. It really depends on what your requirements are. It may be something as simple as some blue tack or masking tape or a more advanced process like using a vacuum former. Next, we're going to take a look at a few of these options. To quickly and accurately place items with a right angle or a straight edge onto the bed, you could create a small corner guide such as the one shown here to locate items at the zero zero position on the bed. You can use your corner guide to align your item to the zero zero position. Once your item is in the zero zero position, you can quickly align your artwork in the RIP software, especially if your design is the same size as the printing area of your item, as there will be no need to adjust the printable area of the machine. All you need to do is lay down a sacrificial layer of some sort so as not to print directly onto the bed of your machine. Here we have used a sheet of foam board. In your design software, create the outlines of your print areas. Note that an easy way of doing this is to use a scanner for complex outlines. Set up the machine and the print file onto your sheet. You can then place your items by aligning them to the outlines. Now you need to adjust the printing height to match the items that you have placed onto the bed. Then you can send exactly the same file, only with all of the graphic artwork and not just the outlines. Make sure that your file has the same dimensions as the setup or draft file that you use to print the outlines. Note that with this method you would not print with a bleed onto flat items as the oversized parts of the graphic would overspray and then mist inside the machine. For printing raised surfaces with a bleed you would need to create a consistently flat surface for the items to sit into. We will show this later. Similar to the draft printing mode, another method that you could use would be to print a gloss ridge using the clear ink channel of your machine. This method means that you have a physical lip for your item to slip into to make placement much quicker and easier. For printing multiples of square or rectangular items, you could print a grid onto the bed with incremental steps and then place the items onto the bed, measuring where they are onto the axes. All you would need to do is create a file the same size as the printable area of the device with incremental measurements and then print it out at full size. In this example, we have printed measurements along the X and Y axes in 10 millimeter steps. You can now align your items, making a note of where they sit in the X and Y axes. You can use VersaWorks to move the nested items to match the locations of the items on the bed. As mentioned earlier, you want to try and create a flat printing surface for your items when printing with a bleed or edge to edge. In order to do this, you could cut the outlines of the shape into a material so that the items sit flush into the hole. In this example, we used a five millimeter foam board panel with the holes cut to the exact size of the item. Start by going through the steps of printing a draft print of the outlines onto your board. You can then use these printed shapes to cut through the material. Note here that the accuracy will depend on the accuracy of your cutting. You could then stick this onto another piece of flat material to create a base layer for swapping jigs in and out of the machine. When printing, the surface of the print area should be as flat as possible to minimize overspray. If you make two of the same jig, then you can load one with blanks whilst the other one is printing. If you want a more accurate option than hand cutting, or if you have complex shapes or a very thick material, then you could follow the previous steps for the creation of your template, but then cut the jig using a laser, engraver, or a milling machine. For a laser cutter, all you need is the vector outlines of your designs. For a more in-depth or complex jig, you may need to create or have created for you a 3D model, which in turn can be used to subtract from a larger block. 
If you do not have the technology to do this yourself, you may want to partner with a local supplier that can create the jigs for you. Remember that you will need to use the same template that was used for the cutting to generate your artwork file. So both must be scaled correctly, i.e. 100% to match the bed dimensions. As an extension to using a cutting device, you could create a mold and then vacuum form multiples of the outlines of your items. This would be perfect in a production environment. When printing multiples of different items at the same time and wanting to change the layout or the setup, you may want to create an interchangeable jig system. All of the items need to be printed at the same height or as close to as possible. In this example, we have created a base plate for different setups to slot into. This would be fixed to the bed for ease and speed of changing over. You would then need to create pods for each of the product or item that you wish to print and a corresponding design file to place your artwork. As you can see, all of the items sit at the same height regardless, so you can minimize setup time by leaving the print height set at one value. So we've taken a look at some of the more basic and conventional methods of creating a jig. Now let's take a look at some of the options that you could use. For example, you could use blue tack just to hold the items in place on the bed. In this example, we've used a Duplo panel just to print your design onto the grid and then align the print like we've already seen. For spherical items, you could use bottle tops or an empty egg carton. For a really complex shape, you could even use some modeling clay or similar with cling film on top so that the item doesn't stick. Just press your item into the material, place it where you want on the bed and use the center position alignment option for the laser pointer. For printing cylindrical items, there is a rotary unit available for LEF devices. You need to make sure that your design files match up to the template that you're using for your jig. You can do this in a number of ways, such as creating an artboard or a bounding box for an EPS file. You can separate your layout and graphic information onto separate layers and only export what you need, keeping all of the information in one file. When using VersaWorks Dual, the 00, zero position is in the top left of the preview display. So just double check your alignment before printing your design file. If the file is the same size as the printable area of your bed, then the files should marry up perfectly. A few things to remember. You can use locating pins or screws where possible to align your jig to the bed. Try to keep your printing area or surface as flat and level as possible. Ensure your artwork and files match from the jig design to the print file. You do not need to print a whole jig. You can use the clip and tile tab in VersaWorks to only print a specific area of the design file. And that's it. An overview of some of the many ways that you can create a jig for your devices. I hope you found this video useful.